It is November 11, 2019, and today is special. Not only because it's Armistice Day, which also makes it Veterans Day here in the US. Today, Mercury transits the sun, and that only comes around every three to 13 years. Mercury transits, at least for the last few hundred years and for the next few hundred years, only happen in early November or early May. Mercury's orbit is quite inclined compared to Earth, and so there are just two brief times each year, early November and early May, when Mercury's orbit crosses the Sun's disk. And it won't happen every May or November, because Mercury needs to happen to be in that part of its orbit at just the right time. Transits are important moments in astronomy, even if they are nowhere near as interesting or inspiring as a solar eclipse. Many theories have been tested, from general relativity to just calculating Mercury's size and Earth's distance from the Sun, thanks to transits. The transits of planets that have an atmosphere, like Venus, offer a rare moment to capture spectra, which can tell us what's in the planet's atmosphere. In our solar system, Venus and Mercury are inferior planets to ours, not just because they don't have spam pineapple pizza, dank astrophysics memes, and four-legged fur buddies. I mean they are inferior because their orbits are inside Earth's orbit around the Sun. That means they have phases just like our Moon, and can cross the Sun from our point of view, just like our Moon. Venus, however, transits the Sun twice every 105 to 120 years. Unfortunately, only the very youngest people alive today will stand a chance to see the next one, barring we figure out how to cure that whole mortality thing. The last one was in 2012. Luckily, I was there. The next one isn't until 2117. It's just fun to think about this ball of light at the center of our solar system has a planet in front of it from our perspective, and this bird, for an instant and a half mile away, lines up in my camera lens inside the sun. Pretty epic. Unfortunately, eclipse glasses aren't gonna do you one bit of good with a Mercury transit. You'll need a high-powered lens or a small telescope. Ideally, you'll want a tracking mount too. It's not required, but it's more convenient. And of course, clear skies, which I'm having a little bit of trouble with right now. Absolutely do not look at the sun directly, or through a telescope. You'll damage those precious photon-collecting flesh balls at the front of your face. So to solve that problem, you'll need a solar filter. There are two common types of solar filters. The one I have is called a white light filter. It reduces all wavelengths of light, including infrared and UV, to just a fraction. They are even darker than welding glass, and they have to be to protect your gear and your eyes. Hydrogen alpha pass filters are the other kind, which produce brilliant images like this one. Although it looks phenomenal, and there's much more to see here, decent solar telescopes cost two to three times more than this entire setup and can't do anything else at all. Yeah, but maybe someday. The Kepler and TESS space telescopes use the transit method to detect planets around other stars in the galaxy. They can't actually observe a planet directly at these distances. Instead, the very subtle dip in light output from a star could indicate that an object is passing in front of that star. Once several observations are made, scientists can estimate the size and the orbital period of what is likely a planet orbiting that star. Future space telescopes will go a step further and not only measure the drop in light output from that star, but even detect which spectra lines are blocked more than others. This could indicate not only the presence of an atmosphere around an exoplanet, but even its composition. The presence of oxygen, water vapor, and methane could be indicators of habitable planets, or even inhabited planets. Transits are pretty nifty astronomical events, and while it gives us a few photo ops from here on our home planet, it may just help humankind find its next home, or maybe some friendly neighbors. Like it, share it, subscribe, and maybe check out some of my other cool videos. Thanks for watching, and as always, get outside and learn something new.